So, today we are going to discuss the idea of involutes and evolutes. So, involutes and evolutes of a curve. So, the idea is that if you have two curves in a space and there is a one to one correspondence between them such that the tangent to the first curve is normal to the second curve. More precisely think of these two curves one is like this and suppose the other one is this and there is a one to one correspondence between the points of these two curves. Let me call this curve the first one as C which is R equal to R S and the other curve is suppose C 1 which is R equal to R 1 s 1. The property is that for any point over here if we draw the tangent then this tangent is the normal for the second curve. This corresponds so the po if I take a point p over here and the it corresponds to a point q on the second curve and the relationship is that the tangent to the first curve c is in fact normal let me take normal as principal normal principal normal of the second curve. So, two such curves so the second curve c 1 will be called as the involute of the curve c. So, the formal definition will be like this uh, two curves let C be a given curve and there is a one to one correspondence and there is a one to one correspondence correspondence. of points on C with points on another curve C 1 such that the tangent the tangent at any point of C is normal to C 1 at the corresponding point. Let me read it let C be a curve and there is one to one correspondence of points on C with points on another curve C 1 such that the tangent at any point of C is normal to C 1 at the corresponding point. So, in this case C 1 will be called an involute of C. So, now we will work out the equation of the involutes when we are given a curve C r equal to r s. So, uh, before working out the equation uh, we will have some convention for notation. <coughs> the convention is that all the geometric objects of the involutes will have a suffix 1. <coughs> okay. So, all the geometric objects objects of the curve C 1 will be denoted by
by the same symbol by the same symbol same standard symbol with with a suffix 1 so that will be our convention on notation so let us assume that the curve c has parametric representation r equal to r s and its involute is given by r equal to r 1 s 1 the para natural parameter for involute is taken as c s 1. Uh, if you see suppose origin of the coordinate frame is somewhere over here. So, I will join p with the origin that will give me the position vector of the point p and if I join o with q the corresponding point then this will be r 1 and o p will be r and this vector these two vectors are collinear. So, I can write down from the figure r equal to r 1 equal to in fact r 1 equal to r plus some lambda times t this lambda will be a function of s. So, this is geometrically one can see that this is the position vector of an arbitrary point on the involute c 1. Now, what I will do I will differentiate it with respect to s 1 yes this is c and this is the curve c 1. Okay. So, differentiating 1 with respect to s 1 differentiating 1 with respect to s 1. So, the left hand side will be t 1 that is the unit tangent uh, along the curve c 1 and this will be d r over d s into d s over d s 1 plus since this is also a function of s. So, this will be lambda dash uh, into d s t as it is plus lambda times d t over d s okay. or d s 1 you can say into d s 1 over d s. Okay. So, this gives me this will become t and d s upon d s 1 I can take common plus lambda dash over here also since I am differentiating with respect to s 1. So, this here also I will be having d s 1 over d s over d s 1 into t. So, lambda dash times t plus lambda into d t over d s 1. So, d t over d s d t over d s no d t over d s into d s over d s 1 I am sorry into d s over d s 1. So, lambda into d t over d s is uh, k n t dash so, this is k n into d s over whole of d s over d s 1 all right this is t 1. Now, you take dot product in both sides with t taking dot product First, let us give it some number. Uh, 
in fact this is okay to okay okay now if i take dot product with t t taking dot product with t in both sides that will give you t dot t1 in the right side t dot t will be 1 plus lambda dash t dot t will be 1 here and plus lambda k n dot t will also be 0. So, n dot t will become 0 yes. So, this term will go off into d s over d s 1. Now, this thing is also 0 okay, because this is the tangent for the first curve c and this is the tangent to the second which is orthogonal to n 1. So, this will be 0. So, what we have is 1 plus lambda dash into d s over d s 1 equal to 0. All right. So, now this gives me because this quantity we do not expect it to be 0. So, it 1 plus lambda dash must be 0 from here. Now, I will integrate this to get hold of lambda integrating the last relation integrating the last relation with respect to s of course, what you will be getting? You will be getting c plus c plus lambda in fact, not c s we are differentiating with respect to s equal to some constant or I can say lambda equal to c minus s. So, this gives me the value of lambda which was unknown to us and now it becomes known. We are able to express lambda in terms of the natural parameter s. Now, equation number 1 with this value of lambda will become hence equation 1 with this value of lambda becomes r 1 equal to r plus c minus s into t. So, this becomes the position vector of a point on an involute. Okay. Now, if you substitute here the value of okay. Now, substituting the value of uh, lambda dash and lambda into into number 2. We have got the value of lambda and lambda dash from here if you see lambda dash is minus 1. So, these were the quantities which were unknown to us. Now, they become known to us. So, what I will do? I will substitute the value of lambda dash and lambda into here number 2 to get hold of the tangent. So, I can rub out this part. Substituting the value of lambda and lambda dash into number 2. 
So, this will give me T 1 equal to T is as it is plus lambda dash is minus 1 into T. So, this become T minus T plus lambda times lambda is here number 3. So, this is C minus S into K n d s upon d s 1. So, these two terms cancel each other and T 1 becomes equal to C minus s into k n into d s over d s 1. All right. So, what you can see here is that T 1 is a vector which is parallel to n which was obvious also. So, this you deduce from here that T 1 is parallel to the normal n. Okay. Now, I can uh, normalize the vector T 1 by assuming that T 1 is equal to n. n is a unit vector. I want to see the tangent T 1 also as normal. So, I will choose the system in such a manner so that T 1 equal to n. So, assume that T 1 is equal to n. This choice will make T 1 a unit tangent to the involute. So, let us see what happens with this choice. So, this will become n left hand side will become n c minus s into k n into d s upon d s 1. Okay, so, this will help you determine d s over d s 1. So, uh, what I will do is, so 1 minus c minus s into k n into d s over d 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, into d s over d s 1 equal to 0. Once again, this quantity is not 0, this is not 0. So, this is 0. Okay. So, what do we get from the last relation this one is the following 1 minus where is okay. So, 1 minus C s into k is 0. So, this implies 1 minus C minus s into k equal to 0. Okay. Or you can say that C minus s into k equal to 1 and this implies that k equal to 1 upon C minus S. So, another important relationship. Okay, so, you get hold of uh, uh, this is important, but uh, let us see uh, did we made a mistake somewhere? Perhaps uh, we made a mistake over here. Just uh, let me repeat my calculation over here. Okay. So, in fact, C minus S over here, C minus S into K n into K into d s over d s 1 minus 1 into n 
equal to 0. This is how I should have written. Okay, so I made a mistake in writing this term. So, what do we get from here is that this scalar multiplied by a vector equal to 0 means the scalar quantity is 0. So, from here we obtain that c minus s into k into d s over d s 1 equal to 1. This should be the conclusion and from here you will be getting d s over d s 1. So, what do you want? You want to compute k or uh, or d s over d s 1. So, d s over d s 1 first. So, this will give you 1 upon k times c minus s. This is a relation that we get hold of because we do not know what is the relationship of s and s in terms of differential. So, this is the relation that we get here and uh, if you revert it or I can write down from here that d s 1 over d s will be equal to k times c minus s. So, both of these relations are important to us all right. Now, with this term in hand we can compute the curvature and torsion of the involute. Yes, yes two, two natural parameters. Okay. So, now I can think of curvature and torsion of involute curvature and torsion of involute. So, the situation is like this we are given a curve C, we know everything about the curve C curvature torsion etcetera etcetera. Now, with this information in mind and these terms in hand we can find out the curvature and torsion of the involutes. So, we will start with the assumption assume that T 1 is same as n all right. Now, differentiating T 1 with respect to S 1 because the derivative of T 1 will give you uh, the curvature. So, differentiating this with respect to S 1. So, that will give you the left hand side derivative of T 1 with respect to S 1 means T 1 dash and T 1 dash means uh, k dash and uh, no k 1 k 1 rather k 1 n 1 by say f n a formula and the right side will be d n over d s into d s over d s 1. Now, we are differentiating with respect to s 1. Okay. So, this is okay. So, this is d n over d s is tau v minus k t by serif Rene formula. So, this is tau v minus k t and d s over d s 1 we have just computed. 1 upon k into c minus s. So, this is upon k into c minus s. So, this is k 1 into n 1. So, every term has a meaning k 1 is the curvature I am assuming k 1 is the curvature of involute and n 1 is the principal normal to the involute. So, now you are in, were interested in k 1. So, what I will be doing I will be taking dot product with k 1 and 1. So, this will give me so uh, taking dot product with k 1 and 1 in both sides taking dot product with k 1 and 1 in both sides of course. So, this will become n 1 dot n 1 will be 1. 
So, the left hand side will be k 1 square and in the right side I will take the dot product with the same term because this is k 1 and 1. So, this will become tau b minus k t dot tau b minus k t upon k square into c minus s whole square. When you will simplify there is a dot here. When you will simplify the numerator it will become tau square plus k square only okay. because b dot t will be 0, k dot t dot b will be 0. So, only similar term will remain and downstairs you have k square into c minus s whole square. So, our k 1 will become Now, k 1 becomes so tau square plus k square whole to the power half upon k into c minus s. So, this you can say is the expression for curvature of an involute. All right. Now, uh, you need other thing also for torsion. So, first of all if you work out from here, you can write down what is n 1. So, from that relation I can write down expression for n 1. We have not given numbers, but anyway uh, okay. if I do not remember what were the number. Okay. Uh, kya, tak ho the number? Okay. Now, uh, agar waha one two ho gaye the, to isko let me call this as three, and this is four. Okay, and this is now five. Okay. No, from four. I have n 1 equal to tau b minus k t okay, upon k 1 into k. Uh, k 1 ki value rakh sakte hai aap. So, k into c minus s in fact, k yes, k into c minus s into k 1, k 1 the value of k 1 I will put over here from here. So, 1 upon k 1 you have. So, this will give you k into c minus s up and k square plus tau square whole to the power half here. So, k into c minus s goes off and you get your a 1 as tau v minus k t upon k square plus tau square whole to the power half. So, this is the principal normal for for the involute of c. This is n 1. Is it okay? Okay. All right. Now uh, we have got T one, we have got N one, we have got K one, and now what is left is B one. So let us try to work out B one. So B one. So by definition.
B 1 means the binor binormal for the involutes uh, C 1. So, by definition B 1 must be equal to T 1 cross N 1. Okay. Now, we have both of them with us. So, T 1 is in fact N. So, this is N cross N 1 n 1 is here with me. So, this I can write down n cross tau v minus k t upon k square plus tau square whole to the power half. Now, this cross product is easy to compute. So, n cross b means t. So, tau into t minus n cross t will be minus b. So, this will become plus k b and in downstairs you have k square plus tau square whole to the power half. So, b 1 is easy. So, b 1 let me write down here b 1 comes out to be tau t plus k b upon k square plus tau square. This is number 7. Okay. Now, these relations we will be using somewhere. So, you need to remember okay. Okay. Now, I will differentiate uh, the last relation number 7 with respect to s. So, differentiating 7 with respect to s. Differentiating 7 with respect to S. Okay. Why I am differentiating? Because the derivative of uh, B is actually gives you the torsion. Rate of change in the binormal gives you the torsion. So, I will work out the derivative of B 1. So, that will give me uh, derivative of p 1 with respect to s 1 into d s 1 over d s. So, this I will calculate like this d b d b 1 upon d s 1 into d s 1 over d s. This will be the left hand side and in order to differentiate uh, this right side, uh, I will use the quotient rule. So, k square plus tau square whole to the power half. Okay. So, k square plus tau square whole to the power half as it is into derivative of this quantity with respect to s. Okay. So, this will become tau dash into t plus tau into t dash, t dash is k n. Oh.